a shout out to my girl, Kyrie, because baby, baby girl is doing her fizzle, you know what I mean? So, this book right here, I've been waiting for this book to come, honey, and it is a love coupon book. See, I want it. Corwin to be here because he needs one of these love coupon books as well. And it's for him and it's for her. And you can find it on Amazon. Oh, here comes Corwin. He's back. Okay. Love coupon book. You can find this on Amazon. I think it's about like $9. You order it, you get it like in two or three days. And since it's in the spirit of, you know, Valentine's Day, let's take a look at some of the things that we can be redeeming in here. Okay. So I think that it's really important to say that dating or relationships or whatever you got going on everything doesn't have to be about a man making six figures or him <laughs> fluing you out or flying you out whatever he got flewed out yeah baby it's not always about that it's not always about a penthouse suite it's not always about any of that like it's about the effort that you put into your relationship and i thought this would be cool because this is something that we can both do together me and him and get a little like love coupon so there's one in here it's like a movie night I'm going to come back to this one because I particularly am interested in this one. There's another one that's called date night. So you just cut your coupon out and you say, okay, this is a date night. And maybe you plan the date night. Okay. Then there's another coupon for like unplugging. Right. So you're like, we need to unplug from social media. My phone is over here doing stuff. Like who is calling? I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> you know, can I like, go ahead. You know, I have to say that the coupons sound great and whatnot, but I got to be honest with most men are like, why do I have to have a coupon to tell you to come over to the bed and put on, you know what I'm saying, something sexy? <laughs> coupon for that. I mean, isn't it enough? I'm going to just be honest. I'm just playing the devil's advocate. Always, it's always. Not enough that I say, hey, you know, I send you a text and hey, honey buns, I'll be there in 15 minutes, be bent over the bed. I mean, again, again, okay. I'm not, not trying to be crass. <laughs> I'm not trying to be crass. But I'm going to be honest with you. I think that most men would like things to be more simplified without having going through all this other stuff. Now, I think the book is a great idea. And I'm just saying. Because we like little, simple, cute stuff like that. That's why. we. Yeah, you can call your girl and be like, yeah, be bent over when I get home. Um, and it, it's like sir d dang but you know if you, you it's almost like playing a little game or something it's just like cute little somethings we we appreciate that too other than being told to bent over Christ. i'll be honest with you i've actually known women and this is not and this is no joke known was this to me does this say, what's this say? i've actually known women that have said when you come over to my house, I don't want you to talk to me. I want you to just get down to business. And so Bye, some men Colin. have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, I'm I'm you to see my mom. All We're done with you. And, and, and the point and, and the point is, you're not with any of those women, are you? Mm -hmm. Okay, no, I, so I um, but I, I wouldn't speak to you like that. But this, yes. <laughs> but, uh, but the point. The, the point of the coupon book is for men that are like Corwin, that are having a hard time connecting with their woman because they seemingly say all the wrong things and she gets pissed off and throws things at him because he said, bend over, be bent over when I get home with them heels you know I like and you know that bathing suit, that, that, uh, that birth suit that you were born with, you know. So that's the point of the coupon book that I created. And it's for couples. It's not for one person to give it to the other. Um, it's for both of both participants in the relationship to share in the gift giving and the love making. And it's a fun way to show each other that, you know, affection and love when you don't have the right words, you know, go clip yourself out a coupon. Hey, baby, I, this is what I would like us to do, you know, to my, tonight or tomorrow or whatever. So yes, <laughs> Corwin. <laughs>
but I digress. So back to what I was saying before the uh, podcast is hijacked by my lovely brother. And so I think the reason why this book is so important is because if you've been in a relationship a really, really long time, you, it can get boring. Let's just, I'm like, let's just keep it 100. Like, let's just say, you know, let's call a spade a spade here. Okay. You have to keep the spice. You have to keep the fire in your relationship. You have to keep the romance. You add on animals and, and kids and job duties and responsibilities that you have. It's very, very easy to ignore each other. It's very easy to not even see each other and you live in the same house together. And it's like, when it comes to the whole sex thing, like, yeah, when you first get together, you're like wild animals, it happens all the time. So you get together and you be together for a while. It's like, oh, did it go down this week? And it's like, because people are, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> that's that's not me, because I'm, I'm always ready for, okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> but even men get tired, even they're like, I've had a long day and I'm like, okay. So this book, will help you ensure that the spice of your relationship stays on 100 where it's supposed to be. So I was telling my husband last night in the kitchen and I was like, why don't we do something where you pick a day where it's like one day out the week, either I pick a day or you pick a day and you get to clip whatever coupon you want from this book. And I agreed to do it. I, the, the thing I did ask, if you could give me two or three days in advance so I could prepare myself to make sure, cause I want to make sure it's right baby, okay? Um, so the first coupon is a full body massage. You know what I mean? So, um, there was another one. So date night, which you can plan if you want to, but there's something else I really wanted to get to. And this is not it, but this is it, but it's not. Okay. So cooking together, which is really, really sweet. You know, that might be a coupon where, you know, y'all come cook with me, sweetie. So another one is, um, do something new. Like, I think when you've been together for a long time, you kind of feel like we've done everything. Absolutely. You have not. So let's figure out something new. Um, there's weekend getaway. There's breakfast in bed. Um, there's a foot massage that you can have a game night. And so my husband's was always trying to get me to do the whole Fortnite thing. I'm not really into that. I'm more of like, give me some Grand Theft Auto. Give me some Mortal Kombat. Give me some Resident Evil. I like that type of stuff. You know what I mean? Um, not really into that. So I'm thinking that he's going to cut one of these out. And then I'm going to have to play Fortnite, which is going to go poor because he talks really crazy on his microphone to people. And I'm not going to take that form of disrespect on any level. So the one that I really wanted to get to. So this right here is a coupon for fellatio. And then what is the other one? How do you say it? Is it cunning linguist? This is your book, sis. So I'm asking you. It's cunnilingus. <laughs> okay. So, and there are three coupons in here. So baby girl, go get some cunnilingus. <laughs> Which but, is the female version of head. <laughs> right. The female version of that. So, you know, a little fellatio, fellatio, cunnilingus. What? No, I'm... No, I was wondering um, if I could ask something. <laughs> what do you want to ask? Well, no, no, no. So where can these books be found at? I mean, is there an online at- thing? Yes, yes, Amazon. And we will have the link posted so that you can buy it. Oh, so I, okay. Thank- yes. Yeah. So then there's like movie night. So either you can go to the movie theater or you can do movies at home. Okay. So there's so many different things. Like I like this one where it's like a one hour cuddle. So for me, a one hour cuddle is like, let's get that law and order special victim unit. And we are crazy. I'm like, why don't we watch so much of that? But we do, um, or whatever. I'm really into Harlem on uh, Prime. You know, he doesn't like it, which is kind of making me upset about that. But he doesn't like Sex in the City and that type of stuff. That's probably why he don't read Rose City. I shaded you, I did, okay? And then there's a, <laughs> then there is an anything you want coupon. I like that because it's like, whatever you want, I'm here to service that. Then there is a, um, there was another one in here where there's like a yes day coupon. So if I pick the yes day, whatever I say is my day and you just, you go with it. And so I think this is really good. They have like ones where it's like a workout session together. I like to work out and I've been trying to get him to do stuff with me. He's like, I don't feel like I'm tired. So I got three coupons. He's going to the gym with me, baby girl. Um, dinner of your choice, that's a coupon as well. So there's a lot of really cool Coupons, there's bubble bath coupons, mani pedicure, foot massage. So I think it's really, really worth it. And this one right here is for an ice cream date. So again, 
oh, there's another one in here for like a short walk, you know, outside. So everything doesn't have to be about like spending a bunch of money. It's really the thought that counts. And I had a conversation with Corwin and a friend of mine where they were asking the question, you know, for Valentine's Day, is sex a gift? You know, is that the gift? Is that all that a man should expect is just some sex? And I'm like, no, because that's not really putting effort into the gift. A gift is a gift, a watch, shoes, cologne, a jacket, you know, what are you looking crazy about? Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that there are times that a woman will go into the bathroom and say that she's going to, or she is going to wax up her man's uh, present. And I gotta be honest with you. I think that's actual is madness. And the reason I think it's crazy is because if, if, if a man said that he was going to go manscape his wife's present or a woman's present, that he would just be some kind of a cheap bastard or whatnot that just doesn't care. I think that if you really care and you really just want to give something to the person, I wouldn't give them something practical like a wa like a washing machine unless, unless they ask for it. But you know, do something romantic. Do something that. I could be honest with you. I mean, I am in the vein of the OJs, and right. I mean, I make women the old way. As may I've been very six, I've been very successful too. But we won't talk about that. The point is, and whatnot, that you really do have to treat your woman with some tenderness and kindness, and whatnot. Now, afterwards, if you want to become an a hole, that's another conversation. But I wouldn't do that either. If you want to stay in a committed relationship, you have to understand that you just can't love the woman on Monday and Tuesday, you have five other days of the week and you have to love her each and every day. You have to be kind to her and you have to be gentle with her. And you have to care about, and you have to hear what she has to say and you have to listen to her. That is that is the biggest thing that I do. I put down my phone, I stop whatever I am doing to hear whatever it is. And then I get, and then I say, yes, mm -hmm. I ask questions. That's really a lot of women really need is the man okay, to okay well that's that Karina <laughs> I want to call out Corwin get back here uh, so what I want to call out and say is that I do think that all of what Corwin was saying is important but also like I think it's powerful and it's wonderful to be in a situation with somebody that you love me even when I'm not my best you love me even when I might say something that upsets you or I get on your nerves. Because Corwin, you're big about don't get on my nerves type of thing, right? I want to be loved in a way where even on the days where I'm flawed, you're like, I'm going to give this a few minutes because I'm going to come back to her and I'm going to say, hey, babe, you know, I know you was irritated earlier, but the way you was acting was just not the business. And, and I don't want that type of interaction. Like, love me enough to help correct me in the spirit of love. I don't have a problem with being told, Karina, that was, that, that was wrong. Like, you were out of order. You're out of pocket. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not perfect. And nobody I know is, including my big brother over there in his chair, okay? Nobody's perfect. And so, yeah, there's going to be times of miscommunication. This chase, I'm sorry. Um, there's going to be times of miscommunication. There's going to be times where you, know, you don't maybe like what somebody said or did. But do you just throw away the entire relationship or do you give that person grace? You give them a moment. You talk to them. I've even found it sometimes if you're trying to talk to your, your significant other and they're not hearing you and y'all just doing this, I'll just send a text message. I'll be upstairs in my room because you're going to read that text message without interrupting me. And, and so sometimes it's just different things. Like sometimes he would write me a letter because if we weren't being able to communicate what we need to communicate, I'd find a letter on the table, um, you know, the morning, dear Karina. I couldn't put up with you anymore, so I left. <laughs> no, but it was just like, hey, babe, I felt this way, and blah, 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 you know, let's talk about it when I get home later on, you know what I mean? And so we also have another thing, yes, quote, blah, blah, blah. Um, we also have another little thing, and we don't do it like, what, like the way that we should look. We don't like to go to bed mad at each other. We don't like to, but we do sometimes, but for the most part, we try to have enough of a conversation to get to a, a point of like, what we're going to do so that we don't have to go to bed angry because then you start the day off angry because sometimes it doesn't always go well but back to what i was saying with you corwin it's important to not hold people at such a, a high place of like perfection and i think that you like to hold people at a place of perfection and you don't give people grace to be human beings but okay i'm done i think you are right and it's something that i've had to learn to alter because i my myself am very flawed 
But I think most of that just comes really from disappointment, I think. That's all. Just disappointment in people that you felt like they could have done better. That's all. And we're going on like the two hour mark here. I'm just letting you guys know. Don't you do that. Don't you do that, sir. Don't you do that. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, pardon my swahili. That was actually the end of our questions. You rush somebody off. Was there anything else? Oh, yeah. And uh, feel free to dip out if you need to, Corwin. You know, you look like you got yourself comfortable. <laughs> but uh, back to the question. Back to the question, is sex a gift? Um, it just reminded me of a TV show that um, I watched where uh, the husband came to the wife's job to pick her up and she was looking sad and he's like, what's wrong? You know, babe, what's going on? And he, she's just like, oh, you know, I, I, I know we agreed to not give each other gifts for Valentine's Day, but I thought you would have gotten me something, you know, I thought, you know, that's just something people say to not put the pressure on the other party, but I thought you would have at least done something, you know, and she had to sit and watch all the other women in the office get showered with gifts all day long and she didn't get anything, you know, and mind you, they didn't have kids, they were newly married, you know, all this stuff. And so she was just like, you know, I, it, it kind of did something to me. And he's like, oh, babe, well, the night's not over because when we get home, you're about to have the best sex of your life, you know? And she was like, Ugh, like, you know, like, okay, you know, and so it's just, you know, goes back to that, like, nobody just wants the sausage thrown at them, you know, and no effort put into it, you know, Valentine's Day shouldn't begin or end on February 14th, <laughs> you know, love should be freely shown year round, so then you don't have to put everything that you got on that day, because if you are coming up short, oh, you better show up, you know, on for the 14th, you better show up and you better be bringing more than sausage, sir. Okay. So right. that, that, <laughs> go ahead. I, I, I just wanted to point out that Cohen's video was out until he heard something about sausages being thrown <laughs> and, then he, and then he pops back online. That's all. I, I just wanted to bring you. I see you, Cohen. That's all. Hey, can I see you too? Now, you know, let me throw this out here um, if I can. And this could actually may, may, maybe be the after the show or something of the podcast or whatnot. But uh, yeah, the, but I was going to say this. Um, as far as the young lady who, okay, so, okay, so from what I understand, Miss Russia, the lady said that they didn't actually, that they weren't going to exchange gifts, correct? Mm hmm. And then the so the, the so the gentleman then said, okay, cool. Well, we're not going to do this, so I'm not going to buy you anything. Then she goes to work and sees that other people have husbands that they did not have an agreement with, and uh, and so of course now she feels horrible, and now he's a bastard and whatever else. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, this is wild to me. It's like, okay, but don't get me wrong because there are because there are times that I've said. Uh, don't worry about it, but I'm really thinking, listen here, B, you better give me something. But I guess to some degree, if that's what she agreed to, then why can't she just be satisfied with what she agreed to as an adult? That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, and what, what you're trying to say, what you're trying to say is whack, because everybody knows <laughs> people only say that out of consideration for the other person's pocketbooks, because you know, we don't, we're not living like that, you know, and things might be tight. But uh, a letter is free. A little note, a pen and pencil is free to write down on the card. A text message is free. That moment, taking your honey by the hand and sitting them down and let them know how much they mean to you. Hey, I, do, I don't have it. I didn't have enough to get you flowers, but I want you to know how much I appreciate you, how I love, how much I love you, how much you mean to me. You know, how, how these past days and weeks and months and years have been, that, that costs nothing. You know, so she didn't, Why the fact that she she didn't even receive a note. She didn't receive a kiss. A, 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 no, no form of love was shown to her that day. And mind you, he worked downstairs in the warehouse of the same building where she worked at. She didn't see him all day. He didn't do anything. Well, so I have a question. Um, did she get him the job? I mean, I'm just curious. <laughs> what not now? What, what, what kind of man is he? But I think you get it. You're being foolish. No, no, no. I mean, here's the thing, right? If he here's the thing. 
he shouldn't have to wait until the 14th to be kind and to kiss that lady and just be a loving man to her, right? But he definitely should give her the double portion on um, Valentine's Day. And yes, he should end the night with, you know, some sausage. I'm sorry, you know? Why not? I mean, but, but, in- and, and, it all, and it all takes with you knowing who your partner is. You know, like me and my husband, we don't, we don't celebrate holidays traditionally. You know, so whether we do or don't do something, we typically have that talk beforehand, like, you know, you know, what are, what are, what are we going to do this year? You know, but we're not we're not big on themed holidays. You know, we generally create our own. So whether you show up day of a day before, two days before, three days after, it's usually a conversation. It's an understanding of who you're in a relationship with. You know, and he knew who his, in in the show, he knew who his wife was. He knew that she was going to be big on holiday events because she's always has been. They've been together for years. And every year it's like, if you don't show up, I'm going to feel some type of way. You know what I'm saying? So everybody, to each his own, you know, you know, the dynamic in your relationship, you should know your partner, you know, and if you know what your partner love language is and what they expect, oblige that regardless of what the world's doing oblige Mm -hmm. them and meet them where they need to be loved and i certainly agree with that but can we say that maybe the woman should be then mad at herself for knowing the kind of man that she has absolutely she's foolish and karina taught me this you know you need to speak up if you want something talk about it let that man know exactly what you expect because if you sit back and don't say anything that's all you sis you didn't tell him what you wanted. You know what I'm saying? So if you're expecting wine, dine, roses, you know, sausage at the end, you know what I'm saying? Like, let it be known. Because at the end of the day, it's on you that you didn't get what you want because you didn't speak on it. So, you Heavy know, on it the- goes <laughs> Heavy on the sausage. to like what we were talking about what was it last week where we're um, unrealistic expectations right and mm. I think that sometimes men and women can get so caught up in like watching movies and TV shows that it's like well you should just already know but no I'm sorry you have to communicate mm. with people what your likes and what your wants are because if you didn't get nothing after being like I told him not to buy me nothing don't don't my sis tell him what you want tell him exactly what you want you had your eye on that purse Tell them that you had your eye on that bracelet. Tell them that. Like, and it doesn't have to be a person, it doesn't have to be a bracelet. It could have been a certain teddy bear, it could have been a certain perfume. But you have to tell people, I want long stem red roses. Tell people what you want. If you tell people what you want, then they can better serve you and you can better serve them, right? Do you say you better? You, what do you want? Like that. Yes. Serve you better, yes. Okay, so I have a question, you know, just a question. We got some stuff over here, baby. So what happens if you ask for something that is out of the man's pocket range? Should he tell you that, hey, sis, I don't have it? Or, you know, and then you just don't get that item. Uh, And, well, yeah, so how do you then take that information that you're not going to get your desired wish? All right, well, let's first talk about that because that's a very good point. First and foremost, as a woman or as a man, you need to know what your partner's budget looks like, what their finances look like. I'm not going to ask you for a Louis Vuitton bag, knowing that's going to be $2,000 or more if you work at McDonald's or Walmart or, you know, even FedEx. People work at FedEx, they get paid pretty decent, whatever. But I'm saying, that, you shut up and meet yourself. That may be out of the man's reach, Okay. And so, no, I don't think that you should be asking for things that people can't afford because then you get caught up in this whole, like, keeping up with, like, the, the Joneses type of thing. Well, my man didn't buy that for me and he don't love me. No, that, that doesn't mean that he didn't love you because he didn't buy you something he couldn't afford. Like, we need to be realistic. So, okay, like, for Valentine's Day, I've never I've never asked for jewelry or anything like that. Because if I want something... I got 365 days out of the year to figure out how I'm gonna, how am I gonna get that 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 bracelet or the watch. I'm not gonna put crazy pressure on you that I have to have this. You know what I mean? So it's like it's not about extravagance, but we do have to be realistic. If that man has been unemployed for the last three months, you probably shouldn't be telling him that you want to go to Jamaica for Valentine's Day. Well, if he has been 
boy for the last three months, then maybe he shouldn't be your man. But hey, who am I? I mean, you know, I'm just going to go off somewhere else. Pardon me for bringing it up. I'm sorry. I'm in- because I wouldn't want somebody to be expecting me to do things that I can't do. You know what I mean? Kyrie, what do you want to say about that? Um, and, and I think I think it's important to know your partner's love language, you know, um, because everybody receives love differently. And it's not always the dumping of gifts or, you know, the, the cuddling and all that, all the, um, those things that you're spending, you're doing in efforts to show that person that you love them. Um, and this uh, past year, my husband and I read the um, Five Lo- Love Languages book. Um, and, you know, for those of you that are gaining insight, you know, to connect with your partners deeper, I highly recommend reading that book because it will help break down the dynamics of love. Love just isn't, just isn't you know, just a straight forward road. You know, everybody experiences love differently. And often if you get to know that person, you can see how they show love is how they want to receive love as well, you know, and like, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big giver, and I'm a big shower, like, I show you, I love you by the things that I do for you, you know, I want to create something, I want to make you smile, so I'm, I'm always like making stuff, and doing stuff, and like, look, you know, this is for you, I did this for you, you know, so my, my love language is acts of service, you know, Um, and so, Somebody else love language could be receiving gifts, you know, um, and I forget the other ones right now, um, but there's different love languages and it's important to learn your partner's love language so you can know exactly what fills them up because you could be doing a lot of things that is pointless. Like, I don't care how many strip dances you're doing. I just don't get me tingling in the right area, you know? So I think that's the dynamic that we really need to learn with. Oh, well, I did this and I did that, but that is not really what gets that person going. You know what I'm saying? So. Before we get back here, we have a text message that came in from another gaslighter. (laughs) And he wants to know. Yeah, I said, he's a gaslighter. So this is Joe from Vancouver. Oh, Corwin, is that your homie? (laughs) I I have never met the man, but go ahead. Another gaslighter. He says, why do women celebrate Valentine's Day better than their significant other's birthdays? Put forth more effort. Now, I got to say, now, I don't know Joe, but Joe knows what Joe's talking about. I got to be honest with you. There is this thing about well, I mean, let's be honest about it. When it comes to when it comes to a celebration or being the center of attention, I do believe that most women want as much as they can get, whether it's their birthday or whether it's Valentine's Day or whether it's whatever. It's like a woman will have her birthday will be on the 15th. But for some reason, between the first and the 31st, it's her whole month long birthday and she celebrated with a sash and all this other weird shit and it's like i don't understand it's like it's on the 15th can't you wait like everybody else but no it has to be i'm you know you know i mean i'm the queen i'm this i'm that i'm the third like man get out of here because here's the thing if men were to do this we would be like what the hell is your problem i mean what kind of a narcissist are you a woman does it. Well, I mean, it's her special birthday, but her birthday month. I mean, what is she like? Five over here? I mean, this is madness. Madness. And so, yes, I do think that women use Valentine's Day honestly as a way to uh, really, to really, re- to really go into the pockets of men. Now, I'm not saying that women don't reciprocate, but I'm gonna be honest with you. From the stories that I've heard from this podcast. Just today, I have yet to have heard from any woman on this panel that told us about what she did for her husband. I heard everybody, well, my husband did for me today, and my man, and my guy, my fella. But I have heard, but I have not heard any of you all say, hey, I got up this morning, I made that man a three-course breakfast and whatnot. It doesn't mean that it didn't happen. 
But you told, but here's the thing, cuz, but people told us what they got. I'm asking for what did you give him? Well, you didn't ask me. Well, okay, sis, I'm asking now. What have y'all woke up this morning and gave your mans? Your mans. Mute. (laughs) um, Yeah, Karina, can you uh, ask the question Joe said again? Because I think he was saying that women are not giving enough effort in men's birthdays. Yeah, is that is what he said? Yeah, let me read again to you. Um, Joe from Vancouver said, why do women celebrate Valentine's Day better than their significant other birthdays? So he's trying to figure out why do women make such a big deal about Valentine's Day and celebrating it, but don't make that type of celebration or effort for the men that they're with for their birthdays. And he says, put more effort. Okay, that's what I thought. And the first thing that came to mind was uh, um, she's just not into you. You know, if if that's the woman that you have in your life, that's not <laughs> that's not uh, putting effort into your birthday because a birthday is a celebration. And this kind of goes into what Corwin is saying about how women celebrate their own birthdays. It's a celebration of life. It's a celebration of all your accomplishments up to this point, all the things that you never thought you would make, make it through, make it over. And everybody's not going to celebrate you the way you feel about yourself. You know, so women tend to, I mean, we are passionate, especially, especially our beautiful black women. We are so passionate when we do things, we go for it. And we want to be treated like the royalty that we feel that we are. And unfortunately, we can't speak that year round. So when our birthday, our birthday comes up, it's like, oh, now's my time to shine because this is the day I entered to this planet. You know what I'm saying? Like, now's my opportunity to show out because if I did it any other day of the year, y'all gonna look at me funny and tell me shut up and sit down. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, that comes from largely most women that act out during their birthdays is because they've been deprived of the love that they deserve. They haven't been shown the love and appreciation year round that they should have been shown. And this is their only time that they get to turn up and receive all that love. So if y'all want to see us pipe down a little bit, y'all need to come come through 365 days a year. And then maybe it won't be the end all be all when our birthday month comes up. So that's how I feel. That is absolute madness. And I'm going to be honest with you. Men are not appreciated in relationships. Men don't get told, hey, thank you for going outside and scraping my window out, you know, the snow off my car or for doing all these odd jobs, which is fine. But if a man was to say, listen, because I don't get the thank you or the appreciation of the 360 some odd days or whatever, then I'm going to use this whole month to celebrate myself do you know how crazy that that sounds that sounds you insane guys, men don't tick and talk the way that women do okay no, y'all don't need that. that and if, you, if you did that that's would be fine express that to your significant other but as far as my husband you know i, I mean I, I i don't know if y'all if you guys follow me on facebook you guys see the elaborate meals that you know i make for him i've redesigned his gym different things that I do for him, come home. Like I'm always surprising him in different ways, you know, to show appreciation and gratitude for who he is in my life, you know, not just to me, but to our children. You know, he's a wonderful son to his parents. He's a wonderful friend, you know, and I do, I do my due diligence in expressing that not only verbally, but in action to show him, you know, that appreciation that he deserves. You know, and if you don't have somebody in your life that's doing that for you, you might need to sit down and have a talk because they mm-hmm. might just not be that into you, be that much into you that you think they are, and y'all just trying to ride this thing out together because y'all happen to cross paths. So, I totally well agree. said, Miss Russia. Well said. Well said. Agree. And no, we didn't give the stories about like what we did for somebody, but I know like this year for Valentine's Day, I went out and bought all these balloons. My husband had no clue. I went and bought a bunch of balloons. I set the table, you know, I did lobster, I did steak, I did, you know, bacon wrapped prawns. I mean, I did crab cakes. I just, I went for it, you know, loaded baked potato. I did soup, I did salad. I did all of these courses, garlic bread. I had wine. I even got fancy honey and put some some blackberries in the wine glass, okay? 
like we was doing it okay i bought him a black what is it called like moose something cake it was good like it was amazing i did all that for him and i'm not needing like a shoulder pad or anything like that but i go above and beyond for him because i feel that you know he deserves it or whatever he works very hard he's a great husband he helps out you know with the kids he cooks he cleans he just does a lot of great things and so valentine's day is not it's not just for the woman it's for the relationship and i do feel that a lot of times for valentine's day it kind of becomes like this whole like the focus is on the woman being happy the focus on her getting this her getting that i don't want to just be the only person happy in my relationship i want to make sure that you feel happy you feel loved you feel appreciated because if you're not happy what's going to keep you here what's going to keep you here what's going to keep you coming back home day after day and don't say the kids because children have never kept people married in relationships, okay? So if I'm not doing my job as your wife, as your woman, another chick about to roll up and she gonna do it all for you. She gonna swerve for you, you know what I mean? So you have to perform. I think it's really easy to feel like we've been together for years, ain't nobody checking for you, blah, blah, blah. Oh, people are checking, baby. Believe that, folks is always checking. And I'm not doing what I'm doing because I'm afraid of somebody else coming for what's mine. Because if you if you can take it, then it wasn't mine in the first place. You know what I'm saying? And he, he did me a favor by moving on. All right. But no, I always try to make a big deal for Father's Day, birthdays for him. Um, you know, just any day, Valentine's Day, whatever, because I do want to show the love and appreciation. And because it, it goes both ways, it's not just about the woman, it's about the men too, even with our wedding. It wasn't just about me. Like he was always like, well, it's just you. It's the wedding. It's all about you. And I was like, no, it's about us. What do you want? This is your day as much as it is my day. So when I hear women like, well, it's my day. He's just there. No, sis, you will be at a courthouse in a few months signing some papers to end this. It can't always just be about you. It needs to be about us. So we just, we got to stop thinking me and start thinking we. We got to start thinking us more. Oh, you don't have the rebuttal, huh, Cohen? He don't to talk to somebody else. Alicia, what is your thought? She was like, I, I don't, I don't have anything. Um, <laughs> no, I'm no, no. Silent I, on this. I'm saying silent on this subject. That's all. Well, come on, cuz, give us some of the words or words of exhortation. No, I'm the thing. Why? So I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna toot her horn real quick, because I'm gonna say, and I'm not just saying this because she's my cousin and my sister, but like when she was married. She was um, an amazing wife to that man, and he didn't deserve her. I almost called him the B word, okay? She would do stuff like, I feel like I do nice things too. Like if I know he's coming home and it's been raining outside and he's working construction, I will put his towel out, I'll put his clothes out, just so that you know he can jump in the shower and then change really quickly. She did this daily, not just, oh, because it's cold outside. Like she thought about this daily. She went as far as to put the toothpaste on the toothbrush so that when he woke up in the morning, his toothpaste was on his toothbrush. She made sure that his contacts and the contact solution, everything was laid out for him. She ironed clothes. My husband irons his own stuff, not to say I couldn't do it if he needed me to, but I didn't have to because he did it himself. She went above and beyond to make uh, 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 I'm sorry, I gotta interject there, sis. Not, not to be rude, but we sound like we have a man baby alert. I got to be honest with you. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, you got an individual who he's got to have his old lady to put out the a toothbrush, the toothbrush, the toothpaste on the toothbrush? Okay, no. He didn't ask me to do that. I did that to make his, because I wanted to. I wanted to make his mornings easier. He had to get up at 4 a.m. to go to work. And so that was me thinking about, he didn't tell me, oh, go iron my clothes. Go do this. Go do that for me because then I won't do it. Um, oh. Yeah. I did that because I wanted to. I, I I was thinking about him, and I wanted his mornings to be easy. To okay, be so can I you, okay, so can I ask you a question now? Woman cooks daily. I mean, she made him breakfast, well, can I say something? lunch, dinner. He didn't have to do anything. And here's the thing, and I'm not knocking all that you did, sis, but I guess my argument would be is that if he asked you to do these things, because that would have made his life easier, then it would have been an F no. So you did what you wanted to do. And again, I'm just playing the devil's advocate here. I'm oh, playing Joe. Up. No, no. I'm playing no, Joe. I'm, I'm no, playing Joe. No. I know Joe. I'm playing no, Joe. So it wasn't you no did F what you I wanted to do. 
Mm. All right, all right. Oh, never mind. Let me just be quiet then. Yeah, please. Try to show please. gratitude for her husband and try to show that she that's loved him. I loved him, and that's what I wanted to do for him. So right. it wasn't like, oh yeah, well, if you, if he did ask, it, he didn't have to ask. It just, it, it, it was given. Oh, me and Karina like to say. So yeah. <laughs> And, and men really don't understand the level of love like a woman will go through if you're loving her properly, the things that she will do to make your life easier. You know, you won't, you won't even have to ask, you know, we just come up with ideas and different things. Oh, he makes me feel this, hey, whatever. I want to do A, B, and C, you know, but you guys get your own way trying to assert yourselves and you better do this. And I expect this and this and that. And we're going to be like, oh, well, you know, F you and that plate that you're trying to eat from too, because you're not getting anything, you know what I'm saying? So that really goes to show, you know, like the level that women will go through. And I know in a previous relationship, you know, I was just head over heels all in, you know, lotioned him down when he got out of the shower. I mean, just took care of, I didn't have to ask for anything. And he treated me so bad. And then I got to the point where, well, what's the point of me doing this then for if I'm going to be treated like this anyway, you know, and then uh, the more and more I felt bad, the angrier he got, oh, you're not doing this stuff anymore. It's like, well, I'm not, I'm not being given anything to keep me there. You know, I was, I was feeling all this love from you and then you took it from me. And that was really my motivation to do it because you were giving me something in return. You know what I'm saying? So it's really a symbiotic relationship that you really need to tap into with your partner. So you guys can learn how to tick and talk together and it's not really about one party. It's not about the other. But how do you guys even flow, you know, um, ebb and flow together, you know, in the relationship and what works for you guys, you know? So, Corwin. Corwin. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, I get your point, and I see that everyone is now is um, is rolling their eyes at me and whatnot. But here's the thing: it is not that I'm trying to be an a hole or something like that. There's nothing like that. It's just, I mean, I understand that there are the Joes of the world who, you know, have these questions. And I'm kind of really with Joe with some of this thinking, you know, even though I haven't, you know, actually met the guy. But I do think that there is. I'm sorry? You guys were friends in another life. I was telling my sister. Oh, okay. So we live back in the, uh, okay. So we live together back in the Victorian area, huh? Uh, well, I don't know anything about that. I'll just say that I do think that relationships can definitely be one-sided. And I think that men have to give more than the women give. And I'm going to be honest with you about something else that women do not want to hear. That unless she has some, some emotional problems, something of that nature, um, if a man doesn't have any money, a woman doesn't really feel he has much worth in, um, say, in her life. Now, 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 listen to me now, listen to me now, listen to me now. I mean, I mean, I can already see the a protest in your eyes, but what I'm saying is, is that, it, okay, it goes either, <laughs> but what I am saying is, is that um, a man's value is based off what he brings home. Now, if he doesn't have anything to bring home, he typically has no value. And in some cases, he has absolutely no place at all. And so men know in order for me to be here with this beautiful young lady that I have to have something or she's going to find somebody who does. Now, when I was a kid, my mother used to tell me this and I never forgot it. A woman will fall out of love with you when you don't have any money. Now, I don't know if she was speaking from a personal experience or attitude or rage. I don't know. But I've always kept that in mind that uh, I could not be broke and be with and be in any kind of a relationship, not because I just have to always provide something, but it also has something to do with my self-esteem as a man that I can, Hey, say, Hey, I want to take you out to get that, you know, um, to get that a happy meal or something. You know what I mean? Instead of her asking me, well, do you want those, you know, those, you know, those two made chickens with cheese and whatnot, you still don't have a job. So I recognize that, and I think that there are a number of men who understand that as well, that they, that the love that they receive is partially wrapped up into their paychecks. Now that's just the way it is, sis. And, and I definitely agree if you're in a relationship where you have leaded with your wallet, 
you know, and it also depends on the mindset of the woman that's coming in and how she's been raised and what she expects from a man, but not all women think like that you know, and you have to make sure that you are being clear and communicating what you're about when you come through the front door. You know, men often show up with their representatives when they first meet a woman and it's often their wallet, you know, because whether some say they're, you know, package size is small and they don't, you know, they're feeling insecure insignificant because of that or they're not you know a certain stature or whatever in the in the community or whatever it's all about how you show up you know what are you what are you presenting you know what, what's your representative saying at that first meeting you know so a lot more can go into your relationship if that's what you're bringing to the table when you enter the relationship so a lot of times these women get into these, oh, he said he was going to do A, B, and C, and he didn't live up to that because that's what he brought to the table. That's what he offered. He showed up with his wallet. He was waving it around. I can do this. I can do that. And then the second thing was the sausage he was slinging. That was it. He didn't show up as a man that could do anything else. That was it. And then when he failed to do those things that he showed up with, then she was complaining because that's what the 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 nig showed up with <laughs> you know <laughs> so, so that's on y'all that's not on us y'all cannot continue to blame the woman because you guys are showing up saying i am a b and c because you we're gonna put that to the test i'm like okay put the money put your money where your mouth is you know for me i would say that it was never about a man's wallet or how much he had but it was like how are you going to share with whatever you have with me whether it is i mean have you ever been in a situation whether it's people like family or friends when that person gave you their last because they knew that you were in a bind or they just thought that hey i'll suffer a little bit so that you can have something right so you can have all the money in the world but i mean if you're not sharing that with me then what is it what, what does it matter you could i've seen people who didn't make a lot of money but what that man or that woman had, they gave it and they gave it with good intention. So no, you don't have to come strapped with cash. I personally, myself, I respect the working man, the guy who has the nine to five. You don't have to come with six figures. Now, I mean, if you did, that's a blessing too. But you being a six figure man doesn't make you more valuable. It just doesn't. No, I agree okay? to that. And and like, uh, and like Kyrie said, you know, you got all these people out here waving around their, their pocketbooks like we see on 90 Day Fiance. And then people get to the country and then they're mad because like you promised a lifestyle. But when you throw fish bait out, you're going to get fish. You see what I'm saying? We have to be careful. Can I interject there for a second? We have to be careful with what we leave with. Go ahead. Well, now here's the thing. Now you and Miss Russia make a make and make and make an excellent point. But I'm going to counter with this, that you both say that men lead with their wallets. Well, here is the issue. When a man asks a woman no, out on a date. Not all. Okay. Okay. So not all. So a man asks a woman out on a date because he wants to get to know her. That woman expects that, 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 that man to pay. Now, you have some cases where the check comes and the man starts to look, look crazy and, what, and the woman's like, we went to this place and he ordered the steak and all this other stuff and then the check came, I paid for it. So when you talk about a man leading with his wallet, yeah, well, who is the one who starts it off? Because if a man wants to take out a woman on a date and, and then he's talking to her about, well, she is the one that, need, um, that needs to pay, then all of a sudden he's some broke bum and whatnot, you know what I mean? But when he pays for that day, and then he pays for the, 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 the following day, and he pays for the following day, well, then he's leading with his wallet. Seriously? Really? No. Come on, sis. Come on, sis. Two things. You went to two extremely opposite things. It's not about extremes. We're talking about men that lead with their wallets. You not paying for a meal is not you. I, I don't want to leave with my wallet now. If That's you take not. a woman to a nice restaurant, because I'm going to be honest with you, I like going to, um, to nice restaurants. I go to them by myself. So if I have a beautiful queen on the opposite side of the table, 
well, my meal might taste a little bit better. But the thing is, but because of my, my taste and bringing people into my world, then now I am leading with my wallet. That's craziness. Absolute that craziness. Because if I was to do, well, hey, baby, instead of us going out to one of my spots, why don't we come do the do the do the um, um do the Netflix and chill, and I bring over the Domino's and the chicken wings? Well, then all of a sudden I'm being a bum, and I don't want it, you know, you know, and I don't have any plans as a man. And I'm the, all the other things are women. So when men lead with their wallets, that means that they're paying for the dates to get to know you. So hopefully you can actually have a relationship where at some point you will say, hey, babe, I got it. I'll take care of the bill tonight. But women have the nerve to call that leading with a man's wife. That's madness to me. Absolute madness. First of all, don't be don't be taking a woman to a restaurant that you can't pay for her to go to. Don't be inviting her, first of all. Let's start there. Second of all, it's this new age thing where it's all it's all flash and fireworks and all this stuff to show up, you know, invite a woman to this first date event. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that you don't know, somebody that you've never met. You might have had a few conversations on the phone, but you really, really have not got to know this woman or man. And, you know, to say whether is this a, is this an appropriate environment to bring this person to? You have nothing. You, you have no idea who this person is. So that's on y'all one. You know, because if you take the time and court somebody properly and get to know that person, after that time period, let's just say a few months, you know, you guys still, you guys could have a couple of picnic dates, a couple walks in the park, a couple of ice cream dates, a couple lunch dates, but you should not be going for that higher price restaurant until you've actually gotten to know somebody. And then you can appreciate that experience. You want to wine and dine her. You know what I'm saying? You want to pay, you want to treat her because you appreciate who she is as a person. And you want to say, thank you for being in my life. So that's on you for showing up the first day trying to go to Fogo de Chao and then you hurting because you had to spend too much money. That was on you. Why'd you pick the restaurant? Go to KFC. That better suit your pocketbook. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I know because the lady is going to be very receptive to you taking her over for that that mighty mighty kids meal. No, let's be honest about it. Oh, no, when I go to nice restaurants, <laughs> I can afford it. It's never been an issue for me. I like I said, I took as a matter of fact, you brought up that restaurant that you said, um, I took my sister and her husband out for the anniversary there. When I had a splendid time or whatnot, right? I took some other person too. But like I said, had a splendid time or whatnot, right? The point is that it's not about whether I can afford it or not, because I can afford it. Because I wouldn't be going anywhere if I couldn't afford it. But the fact is, because I would like something and I want to introduce you to something, I want to show you a nice time, because I'm going to go there anyways. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, well, he's a trick and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? Because he had to pull his wallet out trying to impress somebody. Impress somebody. Lady, if you don't get out of here. I went to there because that's what I wanted, and I just had you along for the ride, sis. But that's a savage to call somebody a trick because he took you somewhere nice. Again, going back to what people can afford, I would not expect a guy to go and spend two or three hundred dollars on a first date with me. I just wouldn't expect that if he if he wasn't no executive a ceo of his own company or whatever like i just wouldn't expect him to be thinking he needs to do that i have been to places like ihop <laughs> you know what i mean i've been to sherry's and denny's I, i've been to places like i don't eat at ihop and sherry so sorry i'm not going there saying core when i've been to applebee's I've, I've been to you know red lobster or whatever or olive garden they don't have to be you know expensive places for you to go out to eat and like like Kyrie say, like, can I just like back it up a little bit? People meet each other and then they want to go on a first date because people are so itching to get to that bedroom. The bedroom is coming if you play your cards right. If you do right, it's coming and it'll be worth the wait, okay? But what I'm saying is that what happens to like courting people and like talking on the phone and getting to know each other? Like, you don't even do that. People jump right to the business. We don't, we, people aren't talking on the phone. We ain't getting to know each other. Why not meet for coffee? Why not meet and have a drink somewhere? Why not? Go work out together. Oh, you go to LA Fitness? I go to LA Fitness. Let's meet up at the gym and let's work out together. Like, it's the little simple things that really matter in, in, in terms of if we go out to a nice restaurant and the guy pays, I don't see that as, oh, he's leaving with his wallet. He's trying to impress me. Like, he likes the finer things in life and he knows I do too. I can go to, you know, 
Applebee's and eat and be fine. And I can also go to Chart House. I can also go to Ringside. I can do it all because I'm a well-balanced human being. But at the end of the day, you need to know your audience. You need to know, like, that person cannot afford it. Don't do stuff that's going to put you in a financial bind for somebody who may just be taking you for a ride. Because we do know that people are out here dating just for meals. It's real. And like I said, some men don't care. Some men are... Let's be honest about it. We all know people, especially males, who will take out a friend of theirs and, and, be, and the person will be an actual friend. But they'll front and try to act like that's their a girlfriend. Oh, because look whose car she, she, you know, she climbed out of and look who she was with and look how hot she was. I know a friend who told me a story that she was invited over to uh, with her male friend to go to some kind of a party. And once she got there, she discovered that the man told everybody that she, she was that that she was his piece. So for some people, they don't mind the expensive meal because again, they want everybody there to think she's with, with me, and she is maybe only for that that meal. I don't know, that's but for him, like that 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 is enough. Because let me say this, and this is something that I told a young lady a um, a few weeks ago. You are a prize. Still got the one transaction. Can't we? A woman is a prize, and a beautiful woman is a prize. And so a man wants his friends to think, look what I got. Look what I got on my arm. You know, um, you know, um, Karina, we actually know somebody who's in our family who would take pictures with just friends of his, and then he would would put then he would would put them on Facebook as his as his profile picture, right? Because he wanted people to think that this was his piece. And when I mean piece, I mean it's P-E-A-C-E. So what so, so I'm saying is yeah, so for some people they they don't mind that the woman is getting the free meal. That's okay. That's all right. Cause I look good doing it. But I gotta be honest with you, I'm one of those people like not only do I want to look good doing it, but you know, uh we need to have some, you know, afterwards interaction and whatnot, you did, because I ain't I'm not gonna take somebody out to dinner just because I just because just because I want to take somebody out to dinner. I I am doing it because I want to get to, to know you. I want to make this thing something. Mm. You know what I mean? Now, I will say this though, and this is my last long comment, that I don't take a woman out anywhere with the expectation of she's going to have to do something nasty. That's not the way it is at all, because I am looking for a relationship. I am looking about having something. If the woman is interested, then, that, then I mean, that's fine. You know, no harm, no foul. She, she, I mean, she doesn't owe me anything. But keep in mind, I want to go to the, this restaurant. I want to go to this place. I want to do this adventure. And she's there to tag along. Bam. So I, I, if she's not, if she's not from that life, that level of, you know, going to those places like that, you know, it, it, I mean, it's, it's to be expected, especially in, in today's society, you know, if you, if you take the first date is you're at the most expensive restaurant in, in her mind, you know, I mean, it, it's leading with your wallet. I don't care what it, what it breaks down to. You haven't taken that time to get to know one another. You know, you're going to this place. You're going to be expected to pay. You have not got to know her financial status, what's going on in her life. And first date, you're already at the five-star restaurant. You know what I'm saying? So regardless of your intention, if that's not being communicated, if that's not, you know, laid out clearly, then, I mean, unfortunately in today's society, it is what it is. And let's be honest and let's say what it is. Men and women are both takers. Um, it's fine and dandy to paint the women as the villain and it's fine and dandy to paint the men as villains. But what I have learned and I've seen with women and men is that people are takers and everybody's trying to get over on everybody nowadays, even in friendship with people. I see people like, I, I'll, I'll notice friends of mine who will come around right before their birthday. They're like, oh, I just really want to do something for my birthday. Nobody ever does anything for my birthday. These chicks out here pimping their homegirls who they haven't spoken to in a year. 
for a birthday meal. Like the world is, is very uh, corrupt. And so, yes, we have to be careful that we're not being taken by people. We have to make sure that when, when we put ourselves out there, that we're trying to leave with the most authentic version of ourselves and that has nothing to do with our pocketbooks. And life may be good for you in terms of finance. Financially, things are good, right? But I don't, I'm not required to share that with you. I'm just getting to know you, you know? Let's take a simpler approach. Simple can be better. You know what I mean? Short and sweet, simple, you know, conversations. And forget all this texting. What are you doing? You know, and all that. Like, get to know people. Pick up that damn phone and holler at your girl and find out, like, what's really going on. A text message in the morning is fine. But if that's all you're trying to do to establish a connection with somebody, that's problematic, too. People are not leading with authentic relationships. Yep, that WID. <laughs> that is so annoying. You can't even what type it out. Like, what are you doing? You got to say WID, automatic, not response. <laughs> well, okay. Now, here's the thing. Now, this might also be a very unpopular thing to say, but it's probably true. When you are texting multiple women at the same time, you don't have time to be typing stuff out. You just need to hit them with a quick acronym and get on with it. All I want to do is... And it, uh -uh. Women know it. Huh? Women know that when a man takes no effort, and that is the point. Yeah, exactly. You know, all this guy's talking about you. There's nothing authentic there. They're, women they're are doing the generic. same thing. Women are doing the same thing. Oh, they are. You know, women are doing the same thing. But it's always, I'm going to just be honest with you, but it's always this thing about that I think that men are just, you know, these, you know, these people that just can't control themselves. Where I think, I'm, okay, let's be honest about it. When you watch um, the Maury show and paternity court, who are the people up there who can't control themselves? Now, cuz is like, yeah, bro, I hear you. So, I mean, we're talking about people can't control themselves and people are authentic and whatnot, but how many people are coming there and they didn't ran this man like, through the mud and he's a deadbeat. I mean, um, he hasn't taken care of Johnny, so I don't know when. And then come to find out after she didn't put yeah, the man on child support. Girl, stop it. Got you know, and then she like, oh well, oh oh well, that's fine, that's fine. What you mean it's fine? You didn't say you didn't you you dragged me behind the Pierce Transit bus, and now all of a sudden well, it's good, it's okay. So what? All right, well now he's out the picture, so let me go find the real kids. Well, like, what are you talking about, sis? You didn't ruin my mother living life. You told my my wife about it, and yeah, and I seen an episode. My man had to drag his wife sir, into the room. Sir, if you have a wife and a woman take you on the paternity court, you get what you get if you can't throw a fit. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But the man gets dragged into court, you know, has his, uh, you know, has a reputation be smirched by some evil person who then can find out that she was doing the same stuff that he was doing. She's like, yeah, well, he was a hoe and he was doing this. And that's the reason I cheated. Or, or excuse me. The woman won't even admit. She'll say, I'm a thousand percent that he's the father. Then, of course, when it comes out, the judge is like, well, so, ma'am, there had to be at least, no, no, there's nobody else. And and so the judge is like, well, no, ma'am, there's somebody else. And the woman says, no, right. no, they, no. They, mm -hmm. It's crazy, right, up. guys? Right. And they don't no, want to hear I it because it they the want time. first man. And it's always, you're not the father way more than you are the father. And so, yeah. That that's true, and then they'll be like, "Well, do you have something to say to him?" <laughs> no, because he's been doing that my way. It is like, <laughs> "Wow, okay." Can't even get an apology, but yeah. And it just really shows you how corrupt people are, um, male or female. That's why I'm never like men. This no women and men both suck. <laughs> Let's just be honest. To take somebody through all of that is wild to me, and then not offer an apology. But I think it also says that if you're a person and you feel like you that you are a valuable human being and you have something going for yourself, not just like a job, but just your core morals and your ethics as a human being, like you feel like you're a good person, you really have to guard your heart and protect yourself against these people out here because folks will take you for a ride and won't think twice. And, and I agree with you, Corwin. Women are out here doing the same thing, but not all women are. You know, and if you're a stand up guy and you're looking for a stand up woman, you're going to find her as long as you maintain your character and who you are. 
And well, I don't know about you, Corwin, but you know, just men in general that are listening. <laughs> but, um, I know my husband, uh, you know, he would call me every single day. He called me before he went to work. He called me on his lunch break. He called me in the evening just to say hi, just to say, how are you doing? It was no inappropriate conversation. It was no, what you got on. It was, oh, what that body looked like. You know, it was none of that. And that's what really got my attention because I was just sick of the everyday conversation for most men of, oh, what you look like and what you got between them legs and what you gonna do for me and all that stuff, you know? And he was the only person, um, that just gave me some genuine conversation, you know, and just like, Hey, how you doing? And then he told me, he actually told me how he was doing. And then he actually wanted to know how I was doing. And then whether that was a good day or a bad day, he sat and had that conversation. It wasn't like, Oh, she ain't talking about nothing. I'm about to go hit up somebody else, you know? So if you take the time and that, that took place for like, over a year before I was even willing to even like, I, I, I won't even say willing, but I just wasn't even looking for anything at that time. You know uh, what I'm saying? So uh, I, couldn't see, uh, I couldn't see anything past that. Mute yourself. Um, I'm not going to mute and myself, so, Miss like, No, I'm thinking wrong, man. I'm wrong, man. Hold on. I'll, I'll be, I'll, let me help you out. I'll mute you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and so at that time, <laughs> At that time, um, after a year, I was like, you know what? I really like you. You know, you've just shown me a different side. I'm interested in dating at this point. You know, like I would like to get to know you further than, you know, where we are now. And then he opened up and he was just like, oh, yeah, I'm ready for that. You know what I'm saying? Because you're somebody who's been dead in a while. (laughs) After a year? After a year? Yeah, it it, it was a year. Mm-hmm. It was it was it was it was actually like a year and a half, and then I was just like, "Hey, I really like you. You know, oh I'm, open to, I'm open to going on a date." And let me be honest with you. I, okay, from, okay, but hold from on. Every, in all yes. fairness, they were living in different states, though. She was in Washington. and we were in different states. Yeah. Whatever. So, let me just say this: from all accounts, I have to change a diaper. I'm just going to be down here, but I'm still here. Yeah, well, don't worry. I'll talk bad about you while you're gone. And I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, from all accounts, I've heard that you have a very wonderful husband. So let me just throw that part out there. But let me give this other part, though. You making the man wait for a year to even give him some conversation is, is I mean, is wild to me. So he No, I gave me, him conversation. I made But not he, about he, what he was looking for. He, I don't know what he was looking for. He a relationship, waited. As soon as you said it, he like, yeah, okay, cool, cool, yeah, that's right, that's right. I'm with the program, and I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, I'm gonna be honest with you. That is a very good man, and I, you know, and honestly, but don't get me wrong, because I've been in similar shoes at one point in my life, which was probably a long time ago. But I'm gonna just be honest with you. After a while, you can't blame somebody for seeing that you're just not interested in them. Cause you know he's maybe you know he's maybe having some hints like you know if you ever you know would like to like one day or this that and the third if the woman like oh, I don't really want to date then after a while the man's gonna be like hey I've been doing this for three months for six months for nine months for a year thirteen months now we're moving on to a year and a half this lady isn't really interested in having anything so I'm kind of spinning my spinning my wheels here. And so it's just like when a woman is trying to get a man's attention and because let's be honest about it. If the, now, as romantic as that story sounded, if it was in reverse and the man was kind of keeping the woman at bay for a year and a half, people would tell him, sis, he just not into you. You need to just leave him alone because he's playing games. He ain't about nothing. Now, this is what... But you make a lot of assumptions about conversations that haven't been stated. Just because All I'm saying is from my experience. From my experience. Yeah, and, and I was also I was also very honest. I was also very honest coming out the door of what I was looking for. You know, I said I'm not I'm not looking for a relationship. I'm just looking for a friendship. Um, at, I was at a point in my type a point in, a point in my life where I had shut the whole world out and I had stopped I had stopped communicating with people, just having regular conversation and stuff. And I was just trying to make friends again and, 
you know, learning how to be open and just talk. And, you know, he was one of the people that showed up in my life during that time. And he honored and respected my boundaries that I set forth because I did put those out there. I wasn't, I wasn't saying I'm looking for a relationship. And then I just strung him along for all that time. It wasn't like that completely. I was just you saying, enjoyed, just, oh, completely, huh? Oh, yeah, it went like that completely, huh? Yeah, I like ended that, uh, sis. And I saw cuz and cuz, and I saw you doing the whole thing. Let me be honest with you, lady. That's my current journey. No, that's all I'm gonna say. That's that's my current journey where I'm, you know, just meeting people or whatever, but I'm not looking for nothing. Can I tell you what that actually means to men when a woman says that? Let me just cut you off for a second. She said, she said it wrong. This woman has been single now like nine, 10 years and hasn't had a boyfriend. She's not on any dating sites. Like, I think she was meaning like if she was at Walmart or Winco or Target and she met a guy, she'd be receptive to it. But she's not dating. She hasn't had a boyfriend in 10 years be, or, or her husband for that matter by choice. So we want to Well, thank you she there, said, Kevin. Stop. Well, you ain't going to play my girl like that. You ain't going to play her like well, that. Well, thank you, cousin's advocate. But no, I mean, here's the thing. Usually when a man hears a woman saying that she's just looking for friendship, she really much is just looking to get her back blown out. And I'm going to be honest with you. I've actually known this particular person who told me that they had close, they, they had mid double digit sex partners. I said, oh, okay, that's what's up. But well, I know because listen to me now, but then she said that she'd only been in like under six or seven relationships. So I'm thinking, so the, okay, so the, so the rest of these were just for your friendships, huh? Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And so that's what, when a man says that a woman is just looking for friendship, she basically wants the late night creep without the actual, uh, cause, and I'm not saying this about you, but what I'm saying is when men hear that a woman only wants to have a friendship, then that's telling him that she's not actually looking to be my, you know, to be my girlfriend and, and me being her boyfriend when she wants her pipes cleaned at every, you know, you know, month or whatever. No, I'm okay. Again, I'm be honest with you. This is what goes on. And then the man comes over, he does, does his thing and then whatever. Now, in some cases that's happened, I know of one, unfortunately that the woman did not want a relationship. She got her pipes cleaned out and then she ended up like getting pregnant. Well, after she gets pregnant, well then, the man should know that it's his kid and he needs to start to do stuff. And the guy's like, well, first of all, you're only like two months pregnant. So I don't know if it's my kid or not because we were only friends, right? You might've had other friends over there, but she tried to make the guy sound like he was some kind of an animal because of he didn't want to do anything while she was pregnant. Okay, well, that's just your, but that's just your friend. That man doesn't know. Now, when she delivered the kid and they did the DNA test, fine, okay, it's this kid, okay, well, okay, well, he should get, you know, start to get busy. But when a woman says, all I'm looking for is friendship, she is looking for you to come over after her kids are in bed and leave before they get up in the morning. That's just how Oh, it that's you not true. That's, that's not every all right, yeah, that's all right. not every female, and that's exactly I, I what I haven't banged any friends. I did not say it was every female. I'm just saying this is what goes on. This is what men think when a woman says that she's been single for a while and that she didn't want a relationship. That's what the man's thinking. Okay, cool. Yeah, and but then, and then you guys know, her. once you guys find out what type of woman she is and you guys don't like her, you still continue to sleep with her. You still continue to entertain, you know, going over her yes. house and doing all the things that, you know, you feel you want to. And then you turn around and complain about her instead of walking away from the relationship and saying, this is not the type of woman that I envisioned myself getting into a relationship with. But then you want to turn around and complain about her. But then you still want to turn around and deal with her. So that's on y'all. You can't that's say, oh, she didn't, she didn't work her. She, she said she was this way or that way. You figured out who she was and you still decided to entertain the relationship, whether it was for intimacy or not, you still did it. It's always for intimacy. Let's be honest about it. And you are so right. Cause that's such, that's such a true thing to do, you know, to sis, because you do have men and I am been one of them in the past who have known like, man, this isn't my bag at all, but you know, she's cute and whatnot and the cat's right or whatever. I don't know. 
But you know, you just decided to stay there. But the truth be told, you're looking like, ah, you're looking to yourself long term. No, I don't see this person as my future. But yeah, but but because you're getting some kind of a benefit out of it, and I think it's wrong and whatnot, because you end up breaking women's hearts who really think that because you are there every day or because you're doing all this stuff and whatever, that you plan that you have plans to be with her and you plan a relationship. But no, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's wrong. Yeah, yeah, huh? So you playing game? If you spend your every day with that person and you know, know you have no intention of being with them, so you playing a game with them? Oh, you are. But I mean, here's the thing: the reason why that the man that he does it because he doesn't have anything else happening at the time, which is wrong because uh, basically he is he is using the woman until he finds what he actually wants, which is wrong. But that's the truth, though. Now, I don't know if men are going to be honest and say all that, but when he starts to talk about, you know, what well, we don't really need, and you know, we don't really need, um, you know, we don't need, you know, a label or anything or stuff like that. And, you know, he's not really wanting to do all the stuff that you would do in the confines of a relationship, then yeah, then he's just kind of there until he finds something better. And women need to watch out for that trap because he is not committing for a reason. This is why, and it's essentially a trap that he's setting for himself. Yes. Yes. This is why it's beneficial to yes. me to have brothers and a father, and I have four brothers who talk the same way, and a father who was the original PIMB. Yeah, but yeah, but let's be honest about sis. Three of those brothers, they didn't actually have taste. Um, in um in in, uh, in in women and whatnot. So let's be honest about that. Now again, I don't mean no, I don't mean no disrespect. Just because you don't feel that the women were of your standard of attractiveness doesn't mean that the same level of buffoonery that we speak of on this podcast was not happening. Well, whatever. I mean, uh, well, yeah. I mean, hey, I mean, whatever. Whatever. So whatever. Whatever. I mean, here's the thing. If you're going to be a Mac, at least be a Mac of attractive women. I'm, I'm just, just going to say, because otherwise you're not a Mac. You are just going for what goes for you. Let's be honest about it. Now, Krita, Krita, now am I lying? Okay. Well, Krita is off the podcast for a second, because let me ask you a question. If somebody has a stable of undesirable women, does that make him a Mac? No. There it is. No explanation. Just no. No. Okay. There it is. There it is. There it mm. is. So any man, any men out there that are listening, if you have three or four women that most people would not consider to be desirable, you are not a Mac, you are not a player. You are somebody who just gets with what will get with you. And you seem to be proud of yourself. Picking up trash. For having that action. Yeah, yes, pretty much. I mean, let's be honest about it. And again, I don't mean no disrespect, but it's true. Now, when here's the thing. Not not here's the thing. Not everybody in the stable has to be a 10, right? Or a nine. You can get a couple of five, you know, a couple of strong on the sixes and the sevens and whatnot, and still be doing all right. You know, right? But if you got some twos and threes by saying uh, my boy, then you then you're not a Mac. I'm sorry. <laughs> I say, yeah, you gotta stop it that shit. You ain't no goddamn Mac. You know what I'm saying? You just another, you just another, just another chump who out here who is just trying to have the trash what the bag. The trash bag. Just pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm eating with a dumpling guy. You're saying, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? The guys, women, they whatnot. He over there talking crazy. Like, no, bro, you don't need to say anything about nobody, my guy. You, you need to. Go get the women some makeovers. And here's the thing. I'm not trying to down a woman because of her looks, because you have some very un, unattractive men. And I'm sure that there are some women that find me to be very unattractive. And I don't care. But here's the thing, you know, right? Is that when you want to then take your unattractive stable and then act like you have something better than the guy who's with the singular lady and try to act like, well, my four, you know what I'm saying? Like my, my, like my five different women. Like, bro, your five women don't come to half of my my one. So you can get out of here with that shit. You dig? 
And I'm just going to just have to put it on blast because we go in there. So I actually have um, an ex, an ex, um, um, an ex, um, a brother of mine, because he's not my brother anymore. But that's another long story that we'll get to on another podcast. But he goes out with hoggish dogs and whatnot, right? And had the nerve to tell me that the sister girl that I was with, that she looked like she had been hit in the face with a shovel. I can't believe this guy. I can't believe this guy. I can't believe this guy. And so I had other people who knew the bird, like, nah, bro, what are they talking about? I mean, I'm playing. But baby girl was a strong seven, pulling an eight, maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, it was that kind of delicious and whatnot, right? I've never seen this guy with anything above a four, but he was talking tough to me. Nah, Mr. Bailey, nah. So, of course, I had to put him in his place like, dude, your lady has a bigger shoe than mine. I wear a size 13, my boy. Don't go there with me, buddy. Okay. I wear like the loafers and different things. Honey buns had on, on like some off brand uh, lugs and whatnot, but don't talk crazy to Scott and whatnot. You dig? Because I will put you on rotten, because I will put you on rotten.com. But anyway, that's another conversation. Anyways, I don't know, whatever.